If you follow the channel for any time now, you'll know that I'm a massive fan of the Peregrine Trail Shoe and the Endorphin Speed. So in theory, this should be the perfect running shoe for me. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. If you are new to the channel, well, thanks for watching. It's great to have you along. And if you're enjoying the content, then don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. By subscribing to the channel, you'll keep up to date with any new content we upload. And it's also a great way of showing your support. So it is hyped shoe day at Run For Adventure because we are taking the all new Saucony, very much hyped endorphin trails out for their first run and we're going to be bringing you guys along for the ride. Now this is kind of a back to the future moment at Run For Adventure because we actually filmed this video a long long time ago when we first got this sample pair of the Endorphin Trail. Unfortunately we haven't been able to show you guys any content at all because the shoe has been embargoed in the UK up to now. I always find it really odd that they embargo the shoe in the UK when it's been plastered all over the internet. Facebook Facebook, Instagram, on YouTube. A lot of the American channels on YouTube have been reviewing the shoe, talking about the shoe, showing the shoe. So I'm not really sure. Do they realize that, you know, we do have internet in the UK, you know? So I'm sure it's coming as no surprise at the looks and the design. And you probably already know a lot about the features of the shoe. All I can do is apologize that we couldn't bring you the content any sooner, but we're gonna be having lots of content featuring the Endorphin Trail over the coming weeks. So back to the Endorphin Trail and first impressions are this is a super cool looking trail shoe. I love this flag design with the contrasting bright yellow outsole on the shoe and it also comes with a really funky matching shoe box. The other thing on first impressions is the weight of the shoe. Having the endorphin name tagged to this, knowing how light and responsive and fast the endorphin speed was and how much I enjoyed running in that shoe. I was kind of expecting the endorphin trail to be a very similar thing. Lightweight, responsive, super quick on the technical trails. So when I put it on the scales to get a weight of a men's UK 9.5, I was really surprised when the weight came up at 345 grams. Obviously, this is a sample pair of the shoes, so weights might fluctuate when they bring out the production models, but I've got to be honest, it was a real big shock when the weight came up and I wasn't expecting that. So the Endorphin Trail is a deep midsole trail running shoe that's been designed to handle long distances and to offer the runner a great level of cushioning, comfort, protection, and grip. It retails in the UK for 155 pounds, and it runs off a 4 mil offset. So we've got 36.5 mil under your heel and 32.5 mil under your forefoot. That deep midsole is constructed using the same Power Run PB compound that's used in the Endorphin Pro and the Endorphin Speed road running shoes. I am a massive fan of this high energy returning compound in the midsole of a running shoe, but it is slightly different in the trail version. So what Saucony have done is they've wrapped that midsole compound in this sort of thin mesh overlay. The reason being that's to help with sort of lateral and medial stability when you're running on uneven ground or technical trails. There's no carbon or TPU plates worked into that midsole. And actually there's not even a rock plate under your forefoot, but you do get that great Saucony speed roll geometry worked into the shoe. And the outsole has a, an aggressive 4.5 mil lug, and that lug is clad in the very sticky Saucony's power track rubber. So should offer great levels of traction all year round. Moving to the upper of the shoe, and it is a booty construction. So we've got no traditional tongue in the shoe. It's just a one piece upper. Uh, as far as the mesh that's been used, it's quite a thick mesh. It feels like it's a multi-layered mesh and it's got quite a close weave on it. So it'll be really interesting to see how breathable this upper is, especially when running in hot conditions. We've got really substantial overlays around that toe box and around the heel of the shoe, just for a bit of extra durability. The lacing system on the shoe is very different from a standard type of lacing system and something that I haven't seen on a Saucony trail running shoe before. Unfortunately, 
unfortunately because of that, you don't get that extra eyelet at the top there. So if you run your running shoes with that runner's knot, unfortunately you won't be able to do that with the endorphin trail. The upper also gets a handy pull tab on the tongue and on the heel just to make it a bit easier to get in and out of the shoe. So there's a few details about this new and very much hyped trail running shoe from Saucony. If you follow the channel for any time now, you'll know that I'm a massive fan of the Peregrine Trail shoe and the Endorphin Speed. So in theory, this should be the perfect running shoe for me, but I've waited long enough. I can't wait any longer. We need to get this shoe on our feet. We need to hit the trails. So let's get running. So the plan today is to get about 10 miles in the new Endorphin Trail. And we've got a bit of company, I'm glad to say. So I'm running with Liga today. She is out on a long run preparing for the Serpent Trail 100K. She's got about a month to go, looking good, feeling fit, running well. Obviously when this video goes out, because of all the embargo nonsense, we may well have gone to the Serpent tra Trail and she may well have finished the 100k by now. We are about one and a half miles into the run. And the first and biggest impression that I'm having so far in the shoe is it feels very different from the endorphin speed road shoe. Now, obviously I know this is a trail shoe. It's aimed at a completely different type of running compared to the road shoe. But what I will say is if you are looking for the endorphin trail to feel very similar to the endorphin speed because you've run in it and loved it, it is a very different feeling shoe. Obviously we're only one and a half miles into the run and we've got a long way to go and we'll have a much better idea about the shoe as we go. But it's another glorious day out here on the Towns of Hale. I ran yesterday, first run back after the Southwest Traverse and I'm running again today and the legs feel good. So definitely positive moving forward. Can't wait to get to the Serpent Trail and push hard on that beautiful 50K course. In the distance there, Godreavy Lighthouse. So we're gonna be running all the way out to the headland. And we're gonna be going up to where the seals are, really popular place for tourists this time of the year. You get to see lots of cute baby seals down in the cove. So we'll see if there's any there when we get there, but glorious views yet again in Cornwall. So we have made it to the halfway point and the seals. I'm going to talk quietly because we don't want to scare them, but there might be some seals when we get there. Let's have a look. <coughs> That'll be a no then. Right, let's move on. But we might not have seals, but what we have got is military radar. I filmed the Clifton first impressions review and I spoke about the G7. I'm filming this the day after and you can see that's how serious they're taking it. We've got it all penned off and we've got a massive military radar set up uh, in the middle of the towns, which is rather random, but so far so good. Shoes feeling comfortable. We just clocked five miles. The outsole feels really grippy. We come across the town, so lots of loose sand, loose rock, and it's gripped really well. So we made it up to the seals. Unfortunately, there was no seals there. So we've looped that round and we're heading back down to Hale now. I'm uh, just doing a nice steady 10 miles with Liga, but she's out for a solid 20 miler in preparation for the Serpent Trail. Running well, feeling good, looking strong. So yeah, I'm being a bit of a lightweight still, still recovering from the Southwest Traverse, so don't want to do anything too extreme or else. Obviously, I would have kept her company all the way around, but to be honest, um, I keep shoving the camera in her face and getting her to stop and run past the camera. So 
she'll probably be glad when she gets rid of me at 10 miles. Is that we just come across that on our run out on the towers. Do you recognize those faces? <laughs> Brilliant is that. I hope they all get to see it when they come down. So apparently that's been done by an artist called Joe Rush and it's using all obviously electrical weights. But how amazing is that? <laughs> So this is where me and Liga are going to park company. I'm just going to top up our bottles. I've done a good, well, just over 10 miles. It's got about nine miles to go. So like I said, we're just going to top up our bottles. And then Liga is heading off down by the river in Hale, beautiful part of the route. And I'm heading off that way back home. So Liga is all topped up and she's heading off onto her second 10 miles. Feeling really confident she is about 100K now. It's going to be her first time at that distance. Training's going well, she's feeling fitter and stronger, so she's getting really positive about it now. As far as the endorphin trail goes, what, we're 10 and a half miles in, the shoes felt very, very comfortable, and I think I've actually grown to like it more as the run's gone on. When I first started running in the shoe, I was expecting a very different shoe with it being the endorphin trail. I kept relating it to that endorphin speed road shoe and how that felt, and this shoe feels very different to that. But like I said, as I put the miles in, I think the shoes felt better and better, and I think it must be one of the most stable, connected, deep midsole trail shoes that I've ever run in. Yes, by putting that mesh around the midsole, it's definitely made that PB compound feel very, very different, but it does make you feel very planted on uneven and technical trails. I've had no issues with stability at all when it comes to the shoe. So lots and lots of positives when it comes to the new Endorphin Trail. Lots of things I'm really liking about the shoe, but there is still some things I'm not fully sure about. So we're gonna head off back to the flat and we can discuss them in a bit more detail. So we're back from another stunning 11 miles out on the beautiful sunny trails of Cornwall. We've left Liga to continue our run, to continue that 20 mile effort. And we just thought we'd pop back and dive into a bit more details on how we feel the Endorphin Trail has performed on its first run. This is definitely a trail running shoe that has surprised me when it comes down to the fit, the weight, and the performance. And if I'm honest, I feel a little bit underwhelmed. With Saucony producing some of the best running shoes in the game, at the moment and this trail shoe having the endorphin name I really did have high hopes I was really looking forward to it and I had big expectations for this shoe being a massive fan of the endorphin speed road shoe as a lot of you guys are out there loving every step I run in that shoe I think it's such a versatile road shoe I really did think this shoe was going to give me that type of feel on the trail and unfortunately it just hasn't delivered on those expectations now there are some elements of the shoe that I've really enjoyed out on that first 11 mile run in the shoe and the first one being the power run pv midsole i'm a big fan of this compound in a running shoe and it felt very comfortable underfoot it feels like it'd be very comfortable over a long period of time in the shoe it still felt like it had a bit of energy return in that compound but it has lost a bit of that sort of power run PB bounce and spring because it's been covered with that mesh overlay to give the shoe a bit more stability. It has lost a little bit of pop underfoot, which is a shame. I understand why they've done it. And it does make this deep cushioned midsole platform feel very stable and very connected underfoot. And in fact, one of the most stable deep cushion platforms I've run in. But that's kind of where the positive stop for me with Saucony calling it the endorphin trail. I really was expecting that sort of lightweight, super responsive, high energy returning trail running shoe that you want to put on, you get excited and you want to go and attack technical trail and run really quickly over it. And that's not really what's been delivered. In fact, 
I really don't know why Saucony have called it the endorphin trail. I think it would really benefit from losing 30 to 40 grams in weight. Again, 340 grams in a men's UK 9.5. It wouldn't really bother me in a shoe that I'm gonna be running steady paces over long distance, say ultra marathon, stuff like that. But again, because it had the endorphin name tag to it, Thinking of them road shoes, super light, responsive. It's what I was expecting from this trail shoe. And again, it's not what's been delivered. I think it'd be very easy to get that weight down them 30 or 40 grams just by stripping a bit of bulk away from this quite heavy upper construction. So we've got a sort of multi-layered, close woven mesh construction on that upper. We've got lots of padding and bulk around that heel collar overlays, heel counters, lots of stuff going on that really does add a lot of weight to this shoe. Also, it makes the shoe run quite warm. Um, all them layers, your foot does get quite hot in it. It was quite warm out there today, quite sunny. To be fair, it probably wouldn't be an issue when it comes to the shoe and warmth in the UK because to be honest, we don't really have hot enough climate for that to be an issue. But if you live overseas in a warm country, I think this shoe would run quite warm and it would get hot quite quickly. Now, don't get me wrong, it sounds like I had a really bad first run in the shoe and that's not really the case. It's just not what I was expecting from an endorphin trail running shoe when I compare it against the endorphin road running shoe lineup. But if you're looking for a trail running shoe that's gonna run over long distance, ultra marathon distance, it's gonna keep you comfortable, well cushioned, well protected underfoot over a big mix of different terrains and it's going to offer good traction on those terrains then I think the endorphin tray would actually do that pretty well. That speed roll geometry in the midsole works super well as good as the road running shoe so really good at slow tempos. When I upped the pace again it felt very efficient underfoot. Even though that midsole is deep and cushioned like I said before I still felt really connected and really grounded underfoot even on technical trails that I ran. But if you're looking for the equivalent of the endorphin speed road shoe in a trail running shoe and let's be honest I think that's what we were all looking for I think the endorphin trail might leave you a little bit disappointed I always find it really frustrating when a shoe's been super hyped and you're expecting great things from a shoe and then it turns up and it doesn't really deliver and unfortunately the endorphin trail does fit into that category obviously this is just our first run first impressions in the endorphin trail and I've only run 11 miles in it so we're going to continue to run in it put miles into it and we'll be back with our full in-depth review on the shoe and who knows our opinions our views on it might have changed but at the moment I'm kind of left thinking when the endorphin trail 2 comes along hopefully Saucony have stripped back that upper made it lighter made it more breathable and then we are definitely getting somewhere with the endorphin trail shoe and I think then it would perform a lot more like the endorphin road shoe lineup and that can only be a great thing. So that is a wrap on another slightly disappointing first run, first impressions video here at Run For Adventure. Really hope you enjoyed it guys, hope you found it helpful. Really sorry that we couldn't get our content out on the Endorphin Trail any sooner, but we have only just been allowed to upload the content. I've left links in the description below if you wanna find out any more information about the Endorphin Trail or about Saucony as a running brand, please click that link and do so. And I know the shoes brand Brand new it's only just come out but if you've been lucky enough to get hold of a pair you've taken it for a run how do you find the shoe do you feel a little bit disappointed about the performance let us know in the comments below don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already you can also follow us on our other social media platforms whether it be Instagram Facebook or Strava but for now guys thanks for watching it's always appreciated we will see you back here very soon and as always stay safe and keep on running <laughs>